Let's explore around a little bit, shall we? Oh, spooky. Spooky dookie dookie. It's a bell. The sign says we should ring it for service. You should ring that bell. Ring that bell. Ring my bell. The sign says, for whom does the bell toll? It tolls for me. Ring bell for song. service. Sincerely, Papaya Dan Smith. Well, at least it appears that Mr. Smith has a sense of humor. Let's get up in that graveyard. For some reason. What do you mean? The crosses on the gravestone. They hurt. I can't seem to approach them. Oh boy, I was afraid of this. You're not going to be able to walk through the graveyard with all those crosses everywhere. It's a sign for the graveyard. And apparently picnic grounds too. It is a beautiful moon lighting up in the night sky. When I look at its lovely shining form, I see tranquility. Shit. It appears to be a well. It's the damnable castle of Varg, the site of my former prison. Before I die, I vow to see it utterly destroyed. I'll take it apart brick by brick if necessary. Uh, Mona? You know, um... You're already technically dead, so you kind of missed your deadline. It's a bad joke. Mm. Oh, it's garlic! Oh, it smells so bad I can't get close to it! There's no way I'll be able to approach the door while it's still hanging there! Beautiful window. Look how the red is juxtaposed with the green. It looks like a cross between Christmas and a Munich beer hall. You're always so negative, Frederick. Who's being negative? Both are festive occasions that involve heavy drinking. You can't go wrong with that. I gotta agree with the bat. It's a wheel. I wonder what it's for. You know what they say, good fences make good neighbors. Glad we don't live next to her then. That thing's barely standing. She must be a very bad neighbor. Oh, Fodrick, there might be bats up there. Do you have any relatives living up there? Not that I know of. Eh, but there could be some poor suckers up there hiding from the Belfry boys. As you know, they can be pretty good at collecting their debts. It's a hayloft. Yuck! It's an entire room filled with scarecrow in it. It's some sort of frozen statue depicting a humanoid figure. It's actually called the snowman. Oh, really? 
And how do you know he's a man? Eh, because he's got snow but I'm not gonna say it. There are probably kids around. I don't want to carry it around. It's so cold and wet. Like my nose. Feel it. Ugh! No! But I will keep this snowball in mind just in case. Alright, snowman. Let's see what's in here, shall we? It's a horse! Of course. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. Oh, it's a poor creature! It looks like he's broken his leg. I'd say it's more likely he's broken the law. What do you mean? That's a Draxylvanian boot on his hook. Either his owner is using it as an anti-theft device, or the Draxylvanian Police Department put it on because he has too many unpaid parking tickets. What did he say? Something along the lines of, Get this thing off my hoof right now! Shit, all kinds of bullshit to look at. Weird! That's a number for our rehearsal room at the Pelly Institute of the Operatic Arts. The plate is French too. On the bottom it says Pa Arts, quality since 1870. It's a horseshoe! I bet that's somebody's lucky charm. Lucky charm, huh? I prefer green clovers, pink hearts, or blue diamonds. Sounds like somebody's a little full of themselves. It says O Oz Teeth. I think it says O positive. Why would it say that? In case of a carriage accident? How vulgar! This was probably made by some little goth kid who got kicked out of his local angst club for wearing too much eye makeup. I don't appreciate that name. I think this world needs to offer more support to those individuals such as myself who are plasma challenged. Plasma challenged? Hemoglobin deficient? Keep trying. I'm sure you'll come up with something. NCC 1701? That doesn't make any sense. It would if you were socially awkward, lived in your mother's basement and wore fake pointy ears. Drag bits. What is that? Oh, drag bits? That was one of my favorite breakfast cereals, along with Captain Creeps and Frosted Corn Steaks. They're great! <whistles> well, would you look at that? It's the 1890 Girls of Draxylvania Slap-On Tools calendar. Look, this one is showing both of her calves. You men and your obsession with tools. Most men are tools. I don't want to pick that up. Hello? Is anybody in there? Nope. No one in there. It must be safe to open. Apparently, you have never heard of the Stable Shed Slasher Massacre of 1865. No, but I'm sure I'm going to hear about it in a second. Well, not if you're going to have that attitude. Forget it. Go ahead and open it up yourself. I dare you. I want to take a peek in here. Just as I thought, a storage shed. Hmm, that saddle blanket could be useful, but I don't want to carry it around, so I'll keep it in mind. Let's exit the stable here and go to the right. Kinds of more interesting, fun things to look at. It's a sign for the dress shop. Actually, Mona, it's a dress shoppy. That is stupidy. 
It's a cross. I can barely stand to look at it. It hurts me. You're not going to be able to get near that door until we find some way to deal with that cross. Maybe you should look in that Vampire for Dumkoff book that Madame Strigoi gave you. Woman of low moral fiber. It's an oily vat filled with cooking grease. It's the chimney to the dress shop. I can see smoke pouring out of the top of two smokestacks up there. Those chimneys look pretty small. Santa Claus is going to need to go on a diet before he'll be able to squeeze down those. It's a window. It's covered with old wine jugs and cooking oil cans. Talk to the woman of low moral fiber. Hi there, miss. What can I do you for? Sorry to disturb you, but may I speak with you for a moment? That depends. Are you in any way associated, affiliated, related to, or working with any member of a local, regional, or national law enforcement organization, particularly those identified as being tasked with reducing or eliminating the act of human fulfillment? Human fulfillment? She means, no, she is not. Well then, hello there, honey. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. How can I help you? What sort of work do you do? I like to think of myself as a small event planner, or possibly a personal entertainer. In terms of the specific services I offer, that generally depends on how much my client is willing to spend. Damn, look at the beak on that Is there bitch. something particular you had in mind? Uh-oh, Mona. That constable over there is eyeing you pretty closely. You'd better be careful, or you might get picked up for solicitation. Solicitation? Solicitation of what? Mona, you seem to be having some difficulty grasping the situation. This lovely lady here... Why, thank you! <laughs> and I might say you are by far the most attractive bat I have ever encountered. You're too kind. Anyway, Mona, to put it bluntly, this woman is, uh, well, she does stuff to make people happy. Especially penicillin manufacturers. Oh, I, I guess I understand. I think. Forgive me. I don't have much experience in these, um, areas. There's nothing to forgive, darling. You know, you are quite attractive. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're doing right now, but would you ever consider a career change? Yeah, but... We offer flexible hours and an excellent benefits package. We would have to put a little more foundation on those cheeks, though I'm afraid you're looking rather pale. Sure, sounds great. I love doing nails. Where do I sign up? Whoa, Mona. Trust me, this isn't the right nail salon for you. Besides, don't you want to go to Paris and sing opera? You're right, I do. But she made her life seem so glamorous and fulfilling. Do I get two weeks of vacation and ten days of sick leave? You're gonna need a lot more sick leave. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm not judging you. I'm just saying we should be discreet. You're what is so illegal about sickly. talking to someone? You There's nothing the wrong head, with pleasant social intercourse. Do you work for the salon? Work has such a negative connotation. I like to think that I live my life in the pursuit of pleasure. Mine and others. My relationship with the salon allows me to pursue these personal interests Fellas, while simultaneously providing like me with an ongoing source of income. <laughs> Right now, I'm standing lookout for a private nail salon event going on inside. I would fuck her with your dick. 
and someone else pushing. Why are you standing out here in the cold? You can thank Constable Blood Crane, the cop standing over there. He's not a big fan of the nail salon services. So I have to stand watch to warn the private party we are having inside in case Constable Crane decides to have a raid. Believe me, I'd rather be inside nice and warm. What private party? We'll keep this on the down low, but Burgermeister Willem Vinton and a bunch of his cronies from the next village over are having some <clears throat> political discussions in there. Very delicate ones, and they don't want to be disturbed. Disturbed by whom? The Vice Squad. Vlad's Landing Vice, which Constable Blood Crane over there is the head of, doesn't like my business practices and is constantly trying to shut me down. But we are so good at nails <laughs> that the politicians keep allowing us to reopen. Why would Constable Crane not like a nail salon? Oh, I have a bunch of theories on that. And none of them good. My leading theory is that he has a serious inferiority complex because his older brother Lou is such a big town hero and overshadows Bud at every turn. So to compensate for his <laughs> shortcomings, he's way too wound up. He really needs to get, well, get uh, Relieved of his duties for harassing a perfectly harmless nail salon? Yes, exactly. If he'd go away or someone got rid of him, that would be a relief, believe you me. Can we go inside your nail salon? Sorry, honey. No can do. Why not? The salon has been reserved by a private party. I'm doing double duty as doorman and lookout. So unless you are part of the Gothford Falls City Council, I can't let you in. May I ask your name? Certainly. Today, my name is Iris Vivienne. What do you mean by today? Your name changes? Of course. My name changes with my mood. I'm in an Iris mood today, but tomorrow I may be somebody else. My customers enjoy a certain level of variety. Might I ask your name? Mona. My name is Mona. Well, what a quinky dink. I use the name Mona all the time. It is a perfect name for a woman in my profession. No, no. Ah! <laughs> and what is so gosh darn funny? Nothing. That's a lovely dress. May I ask where you purchased it? But of course. I bought this dress at Madame Stoker's dress shop. She does excellent That's work. Of course, a Although to sometimes Grand it's Stoker's difficult to get an appointment with her due to Madame Stoker tail. leading a fairly hectic life. Why is Madame Stoker's life so hectic? Yeah, right. She has two young children who keep her very busy and a very demanding husband who is a bit of a gluttonous louse. Although he Maybe is an excellent customer. And rice. Then by the Twilight Quadrilogy. Just kidding. By that, I'll kill you. That's all the questions I have for Fuck now. Bro. Very well. Uh, if you happen to see a lonely, wealthy man wandering about, please do send him my way. Shine bright like a diamond. Go talk to the constable over here. He looks lonely. It's a bull. Excuse me, sir. Might we have a few words with you? Of course, Fräulein. Do you require assistance? Is that bat threatening you? No, he's actually a friend of mine. But thanks for asking. to say you seem eager to help. That I am. It was my dream to be a member of the Deals, the Draxylvanian Elite Air, Land and Sea Rescue Squad. But I was this unable to qualify for the Nazi service, constable. so I had to settle for being a constable. What happened? Why did you fail to qualify? 
I have a condition known as FC, which stands for fragile coccyx. Uh, apparently, due to the occasional bout of anemia and limited access to vitamins as a child, my coccyx does not have the strength to withstand oh, the sure arduous right. training curriculum. Why did you want to be a member of the deals? They stand for truth, justice and the Draxylvanian way. And most importantly, they help people in need. There is also my secondary motivation of trying to escape my brother's shadow. What does your brother have to do with this? My brother was one of the first deals. On his inaugural mission, he saved an entire village from being destroyed when floods caused the spillway of the Lake Varg Dam to malfunction. Ever since then, he's been known throughout the land for his heroic deeds. Haven't you had a chance to do anything heroic? Sure. I've stopped a few pickpockets, prevented the occasional murder, and harassed that cat house across the way out of business. Nail salon, my... Where was I? Oh yes, but I've never done anything that's been recognized. What sort of recognition are you looking for? I want the town to know me as a hero. A key to the city would be nice. But most importantly, I want them to look at me and say, There is Constable Crane. He saved somebody. If I could only help somebody truly in need. This guy is a real piece of work. What sort of person would you want to help? Perhaps an elderly person? No, I know, a child. If I could save a child from some hideous fate, the old town would sing my praises. Settle? Constable sounds like an exciting and rewarding job. It can be, but this job can also suck the life right out of you. The endless social problems and crime-ridden slums wear you down eventually? No, I mean literally. We lose half our constables each year due to blood loss from animal bites. I'm beginning to suspect it may be the work of... Uh, oh, forget it. What? Tell me. Jackalopes. Vampiric jackalopes. This guy is out of his gourd. Listen. These creatures survive on the blood of others and burrow deep into graves to sleep during the day. I think they are behind the attack of anemia that has been plaguing Draxylvania over these many years. But no one will listen, except you. You believe me, don't you? My, what lovely weather we are having. <sighs> that was one dream. Surely you have other dreams and aspirations. I wanted to be a member of Lake Watch, a team of Draxylvania's best-looking lifeguards. I wanted to be able to save lives and show my brother he isn't the only hero in the Crane family. Why didn't you join? I tried out. I broke every speed and strength record they had. But in the end, they Some said I bitch. wasn't photogenic enough. Groovy. Why are you out here all alone? <laughs> the Burgermeister gave the Cushy Stadium gate job to my brother Lou and stuck me with watching the nail salon. Just because Lou saved the Burgermeister's family from a pack of werewolves that attacked them during their Christmas feast. Fuck Lou. Wow. How on earth did he Lou's do that? A pussy. <laughs> it's no big deal. Lou just gathered some hair samples from a previous werewolf attack, then analyzed them in his basement lab where he discovered some iridium-rich deposits in the fur, Lou then deduced the iridium could only come from a meteor crater, so he went up to Chillblood Crater wearing a had stitch werewolf costume that he'd sprayed with synthetic female werewolf what urine the and infiltrated the pack for three weeks. Shut During up. the attack, he sprayed the entire pack with liquid silver nitrate, incapacitating all of them except the leader. He then fought the pack leader on the top tower of the Burgermeister's house while the leader used the Burgermeister's daughter as a shield. Lou used psychological baiting to catch the pack leader off guard so he could slay the beast with his own silver dagger. Lou is such a glory hog, I swear. He did all that just to make me look bad so I'll get stuck out of here while he got the cushy stadium job. He is always doing that. Lou is such a manipulator. I'm Mona de la Fique, mighty opera singer. Who are you? Constable Bud Crane at your service. If there is trouble afoot, I'm your man. Is there anything I can help you with, Fraulein? You look new in town. I was a guest of the, uh, Gina Martinelli. Until today, that is. I'm trying to get back to Paris, so I'm looking for transport down to the port tonight. Know any? No coaches come through here in the winter. And I'm afraid the old town, except me, is at the big game going on in the stadium. 
I'll suggest you wait till tomorrow afternoon, after the town sleeps off their drunken stupor. Do you know the Baron Shroudy von Kiefer? The Baron? I've never met him, but he's known around these parts for his rather unusual personality, especially around tall women. <laughs> now they say his mother was even weirder. Some of the things I've heard about her would keep you up at night. It's strange Baron Shroudy's not here tonight, since he is the owner of the Vlad's Landing All Black Sports franchise. Makes me suspicious. Um, why is that? I heard a report from my cousin Otto, a glory hog himself, that the Baron's boat, clothes and a coffin were found by the late shore, but no Baron. I bet it was a gypsy witch Strigoi. Never trusted her kind. Otto was supposed to report in over an hour ago to spell me, but hasn't shown up. I bet he's passed out drunk somewhere. Just my luck. Can this night get any worse? Tell me about Vlad's Landing. Vlad's Landing? Not much to tell. It used to be a small hill town called Vlad's Lot, until a rich, creepy writer named Stefan Rex moved in and founded a sports stadium. Apparently, he's a big sports fanatic. It used to be named after him until Scarlet Bovine bought the naming rights last year. Anywho, when they dammed the Varg River, it became a centre of trade for all the local villages on the lake and its tributaries, and was renamed Vlad's Landing. Did I mention I want to kick you in the dick? What happened to this writer? Ah, he went insane when he borrowed a ton of money from the old Baron to fund a horrible play called Wagons. Get this, the story was about wagons coming to life, running people over and terrorising a group of people stuck in a livery stable. <laughs> It was so stupid, the play closed down during the first act. He lost it all, money, respect, and his sanity. I think he's an inmate now at Dr. Legume's Asylum for the Sanity Challenged. Heard he still writes for the Insanity Today magazine. A magazine buying for asylum inmates. I'm new here. Would you tell me about Draxylvania? The Draxylvania's just Holy a group of baronies nested high up in the Draxylvanian Alps. It is a semi-independent country within the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Austrian We're known Hungarian? for our odd customs, beliefs and it's mythologies. Like Hitler. Hitler was like fucking what? Austrian-Hungarian. Well, some of the big it's ones are uh, our nobles game. only come out at night, we well, all use Jewish garlic way too much, right cover the doors, windows, even bathe in it. Um, I mean, some neighbouring countries call us Stinksylvania because the garlic smell often wafts over their countries doing high winds. Uh, let's see, we put crosses everywhere and we're constantly being plagued by some sort of weird disease. Lycanthropy. It's either lycanthropy one year, spontaneous anemia the next, or random outbreaks of insanity and paranoia. It's as if this land was cursed by God, or the spirits of all things pure and holy. Eh, but it's home. Alright, I'm done talking to this motherfucker. What's in that dark or alley not? back there? It leads to the back of the stadium and the side door. Athletes and event staff only. Other than that, just a few boxes of junk and old sports equipment and the like. Of course, it is a dark alley. We have had a few incidents I'm take place in there. The I LP have been pleading with the city council to light the darn thing up, but they say their budget like is taken up with a new public anti-anemia campaign. So to give just say no to night visitors. I like to stay near the alley entrance, just in case something happens again. All dialogue and looking options. Well, that is enough for now. I need to go. Yeah, I'd say the uh, time you'll fuck yourself. Hmm.